<laughs> so I don't know what's more exciting, setting the first rock in the pond, seeing it kind of come together. You've been visualizing this thing for three years and now it's actually coming to reality. I really want to see a four foot high waterfall, four and a half foot high waterfall someplace. And I've got this massive rock and it might work out to our advantage. This project is turning out incredible and we are having a blast putting it together. We've got a big waterfall coming down through those two rocks over there, which will have a totally different effect than the big waterfall over on the side. Look at how great this is gonna be from inside the house. That is framed, right? And that's a good four foot drop coming down right there. So you get to see it from all the windows inside the house. I'm loving the way this thing's turning out, but before we got too far, I wanted to show you some of the bells and whistles and what's going on. The challenge with the power head is it does this. Water pushes from this direction and then sucks, obviously, from the back underside of this. So in normal application, power head would sit like this. It would pull water from back here and then push water here. What I was worried about, if I'm pulling a lot of water from this area down in here, the leaves and debris get kind of confused on where to go. And I want all of that stuff to go this way and then ultimately over flow through our waterfall. <laughs> I don't know what's more exciting, setting the first rock in the pond, seeing it kind of come together. You've been visualizing this thing for three years and now it's actually coming to reality. Or setting the first waterfall stone, which is what I'm sitting next to right now. We need something tall. I really, really want to create a very tall sheet style waterfall, which is really the simplest forms of waterfall. We get a big rock on one side, big rock on the other side, and then something in between. And we've got plenty of in between stuff, but we don't have the frame rock. If I wanted a four and a half foot waterfall, in a backyard pond, if you saw a four and a half waterfall in nature, what size boulders are sitting next to it? And it's usually a five foot boulder. It's gotta be something in the spillway height. And the idea is if you think back to nature and you saw something like that, water's eroded away down a hillside, leaving back behind the stones that couldn't move. So if you saw a 10 foot high waterfall someplace, odds are it's a mountain sitting next to it, you know, or at least a 12 foot size boulder sitting next to it. Not a bunch of little cobbles stacked on top of each other to create that. So I really wanna see a four foot high waterfall four and a half foot of the high waterfall someplace and I've got this massive rock and it might work out to our advantage. Now the way it sits right now is obviously not tall enough because that's only three feet but if I stand it upright we can get it and it's a little over five feet long this way. It actually works out too if you look at this side. This is super flat so this works to be our bottom which is what we look for. I don't want to put that ugly point. I would never make this the bottom and then to sit here and try to shim it all together and try to stand it upright it just won't look good. This side's actually pretty ugly, but this side actually has some pretty cool character with this cool fissure right down the center. The next thing I look at is how adaptable will it be for other rocks to match up to it. And with this being relatively flat here, we should be able to bring something into it. And then I can just tell the way it's sitting on the pallet, the other side's pretty flat. Sometimes too flat on both sides gives you that field goal post, which you don't want. So if it's too flat, then we'll actually come out in front of it or way back behind it to give some depth and different character to it. This is all a thought. You kind of picture like this is how it's going to work. We could sling it up, spend another 20 minutes getting it over there, set it in place and still say wrong piece for this puzzle. So right now the next step is to strap this thing up, make sure it's safe because it's got to be every bit of 6,000, 7,000 pounds. And yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs>
right now we are putting together the framing system for our concrete border for the brick wall that is going to be the retaining wall inside this fire pit area where I'm standing right now. Currently, I'm standing probably right in the middle of the fire where the fire pit's going to be located. We have our frame rocks on both sides of this side of the fire pit as well as on the inside of the pond framing out that brick wall that you saw us doing earlier. So right now, Juan's finishing cleaning up a couple of our piers. We got one, two, and three. We've got some rebar that we're gonna put in and we are going to drop this one by four and kind of form a contour, a kind of an arc or almost a semi-circle line. And the top of the form needs to be at the exact same level as the bottom of our bricks on the inside of the pond so that when we start stacking the same brick, which we have sitting right there on the outside of the pond, which is where I'm standing, we want both walls, the interior and exterior portion of the wall or vice versa, the exterior and the interior portion of the wall to be the exact same height. It's nice and easy for that concrete or granite countertop to come over the top. So he's just gonna finish cleaning that up and then we will come over here, start dropping our stakes in, mark out where our bend is going to be, hammer those stakes down, and then we will put our one by in to frame out the footer over here. I'm gonna come over here and I'll show you some of the other progress that we've done today. The guys started on a slate floor section of the pond. They've gotta fine tune some things. We need one more kind of big piece right out in there, but you can see all this area in through here, which is about two feet of water at this point, is all gonna be slate bottom. And then what we did was ran fabric all over the bottom of the main part of the pond. And this is all going to be sand in through here. We put a mortar slick all the way through. You can see it's starting to dry, but that's going to hold that fabric down in place along the perimeter so that we don't get any weird folds or anything like that. As people are recreating in the pond and stirring up the sand, we don't want to see any of those folds from the fabric pop up to the surface. We also ran some heavy duty or some weighted aerator tubing. You can see there's one whip that's kind of hanging out over there. That is going to feed a diffuser that is going to hang out in the bottom of the fish cave area. And then we also teed in one, two, and three spots for diffuser to bubble up in front of this stack slate wall area of the pond. And then these two power heads are going to push that highly oxygenated water across the surface. And it's going to give an incredible aesthetic on this area of the pond, as well as help with functionality. Lastly, while talking about the stack slate walls, and I'm sure you've seen this earlier in the video, but we've got our inch and a half lines plumbed into all the backs of them. Okay, what the guys are working on now is the manifold system to feed these three jets, as well as a fourth circulation jet that's going to blast out from underneath this really cool driftwood element. The stump frames out this corner of this very organic kind of beach entry. This will all be small stone in through here, but we've got a series of fittings being glued together in through here. Looks like we've got one, two, three daylights there, and then a fourth one down there for the jet that's going to blast out underneath the pond. This is going to be fed by a three inch line that's going to get buried back behind this stone and then daylight up some somewhere outside the liner in through here, and then it will hug the contour of this retaining wall coming back this way, and then that will be fed by a pump that's housed over in the intake bay. We got lots of stuff happening today. I hope you guys are enjoying the video because this project is turning out incredible and we are having a blast. Keep watching, we're gonna keep rolling. So this is the finished product. You can see we've got it formed out. We've got the post hole digger and a piece of rebar kind of holding up the fabric there, but we've got a four inch thick slab and then three piers. We had one, one, and one there that goes down uh, the 42 inches. So it's all tied together. We ended up running rebar across the top as well as sinking in down and connecting them or twisting them to the rebar going down into the three piers as well. So this is good to go. We set it just a hair lower than the bottom course of the inside wall, knowing that just in case this isn't totally level, we could throw a little bit of bedding sand or something on top of the footer in order to get those bricks to the level, not only left to right, but front to back as well. So that our courses are nice and even all the way up and they should be end up the three courses on the outside of the liner for this brick wall should be the same height as the interior wall it's coming together now very very well we were going to try and start finishing out this waterfalls here this rock took an extremely excessive amount of time but we made it work we've got our mortar slick going all the way around on the fabric so once we get that done in there the flagstone area we'll finish off this shelf in through here and then we are good to go to start finishing out all the 
gravel and that kind of stuff. So this will probably be an area where the guys focus tomorrow and Brian and I will start working on this waterfalls over here. So really pleased with the progress today. It was a little slow, but coming back after a rain day and slopping around this morning, we got it done. Excited to make more progress tomorrow. So stay with us. Thank you.